Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We want to find the price of a 15-year $500 par value bond that pays 8% coupon semi-annually and yields an annual nominal interest rate of 7% convertible semi-annually. If this bond was purchased at the calculated price, would it be bought at a premium or at a discount? Okay, and so let's just focus on the first part of this problem for now. Let's calculate its price, and then we'll worry about this second question. And so the first thing that we want to write down here is the formula for calculating the price of a bond. And so if you're not familiar with the formula, I would recommend you watch our lesson on this topic first. You can find the link for that in the description. But the price of a bond is equal to the face value of the bond times the coupon rate times the formula for the present value of an annuity immediate. So we have A, N, bracket, J, where J is the yield rate for the bond. And then we will add the redemption value C times the present value factor to the power of N using that yield rate j okay and so let's identify as many of these values as we can using what we know in our problem and so first we know that we have a 15 year bond and so if we're going to figure out what n is which is the number of coupon periods we have to take into account how many times a coupon would be paid in each year right n is not just going to be equal to 15 because coupons are not paid every year they are paid semi-annually. And this is true for all bonds. All bonds, unless stated otherwise, are going to have coupons that are paid semi-annually. And so, how many times would a coupon be paid each year? Well, if it's semi-annual, that means two times per year. And so we would take that amount of 15 years and multiply that by two, and that would tell us that we have 30 semi-annual periods or 30 coupon periods. All right, so that's what N is equal to. Next, we know that the bond has a par value of $500. And when you see that, that is telling you what the face value of the bond is. And so F is equal to $500. Now, unless stated otherwise, the face value is also equal to the redemption value, which is capital C. And so 500 is also equal to C, the redemption value, right? So F and C are going to be equal to the same thing. Okay, so next it tells us that the bond pays 8% coupons semi-annually. And so this is referring to R, our coupon rate. And something you need to know about the coupon rate as well as the yield rate for bonds, they are always going to be given to you as nominal rates convertible semi-annually. Right? So unless your problem states otherwise, you can assume that the rate they give you for the coupon rate and the yield rate are going to be nominal rates that are convertible semi-annually. And so if you're not familiar with nominal interest rates, I would recommend that you watch our lesson on those rates first so you understand why we are doing what we're doing here. Because in order to figure out what R, the coupon rate, is equal to, we have to take this rate we're given of 8% and divide it by 2. So we're going to have 0.08 divided by two, which means the coupon rate is equal to 0.04. All right, so now the reason we have to divide by two is because 0.08 or 8% is the nominal coupon rate convertible semi-annually. And so when we do calculations with interest rates, we never use the raw value of a nominal interest rate. We have to convert it into an effective interest rate. And so in order to get a semi-annual effective interest rate, we just have to divide that nominal rate by the amount of periods that it is convertible for. And so since it is an 8% rate convertible semi-annually, we can divide it by two, and that will give us the effective semi-annual coupon rate. And the same is going to be true for our yield rate, right? We are told that the bond yields an annual nominal interest rate of 7% convertible semi-annually. And so in order to convert this nominal rate into an effective semi-annual rate, we will have that J is equal to 0.07 divided by two, which will be equal to 0.035. Okay, so from this point forward in this video, when I calculate the coupon rate and the yield rate, I'm going to just immediately divide those percents by two to get their actual values, all right? And so with that, we now have all of the values that we know from our problem. And so we can plug all of these into our price formula and calculate the price of this bond. And so this will be equal to the face value of 500 times the coupon rate 
of 0 0.04 times the notation for the present value of an annuity. So we'll have A and then N is equal to 30 and then we'll have bracket J or the yield rate which is 0 0.035 plus C the redemption value of 500 times the present value factor to the power of N which is 30 and that's going to be using that yield rate of 0 0.035. All right, and so now if we write out this notation and this present value factor to be what they are equal to, this will be equal to 500 times 0 0.04. We can rewrite that to be 20, and that would be multiplied by the present value of an annuity immediate, which is one minus the present value factor to the power of N, which is 30, divided by 0 0.035, the interest rate, plus 500 times the present value factor to the power of 30, which is equal to one divided by one plus the interest rate, so 1.035 to the power of N, which is 30. And so we can also rewrite this present value factor and it's gonna look exactly like this right here. So we have one divided by 1.035 to the power of 30. All right, and so then if we clean up our work here and we plug all of this into our calculator, we will find that the price is equal to $545.98. And so that is the price of our bond. However, we're not quite done yet. Our problem wants to know that if this bond was purchased at the calculated price, would it be bought at a premium or at a discount? And so the way you figure this out is you look at your price and if it is greater than your face value, which is $500, then you have a premium. If it is less than your face value, then you have a discount. And so in this case, our price is greater than the face value of $500. And so this would be bought at a premium. All right, so for our next example, we have that a 20 year $1,000 par value bond pays 2% coupon semi-annually. The bond is priced at $877.98 to yield an annual nominal interest rate of 3% compounded semi-annually. What is the redemption value of the bond? All right, and so the first thing I'm going to do is write down our equation for the price of a bond. And now we can look through our problem here and write down everything we know about this bond. So first we know that we have a 20 year bond. And so if we're going to figure out N, the number of coupon periods, we need to multiply that number of years by two because our coupons are paid semi-annually, right? So if there are two semi-annual periods in each year, we will multiply our number of years by two and that will tell us the amount of semi-annual periods or the number of coupon periods. And so we have that N is equal to 20 times two, which is equal to 40. All right, next we have that the par value of the bond is $1,000, and so that is telling us what the face value is. And so we will have that F is equal to 1,000. However, in this case, we are asked what the redemption value of the bond is. And so because it's asking you what the redemption value is, you can safely assume that it is probably not going to be the same as the face value. So in the previous problem, we said that F was equal to C. We don't know that in this case because it's asking us for that redemption value. And so we do not know what C is. That's what we're gonna be solving for in this problem. All right, and so then we're told that the bond pays 2% coupons semi-annually. And so that is referring to the coupon rate, which means that R is going to be equal to that rate, 2% or 0 0.02 divided by two, and that will be equal to 0 0.01. And so 0 0.01 is our coupon rate, and then we're told that the bond is priced at $877.98. And so P is equal to $877.98. And then finally, we were told that that price is to yield an annual nominal interest rate of 3% compounded semi-annually. And so, just like we calculated the coupon rate, the yield rate will be equal to that 0 0.03 or 3% divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.015. All right, and so now we have everything we need in order to calculate the redemption value of the bond. So let's plug in everything we know into this formula for the price of the bond. So we know that the price is $877.98, and that will be equal to the face value of $1,000 times the coupon rate of 0 0.01 times the notation A with the number of coupon periods of 40 bracket J, where J is the yield rate of 0 0.015, plus the unknown redemption value C, 
times the present value factor to the power of n, which is 40, using that yield rate 0 0.015. All right, and so then if we write out this present value factor and this notation right here, we will have that 877.98 is equal to 1,000 times 0 0.01. That's just going to be 10 times the formula for this notation, which is one minus the present value factor to the power of 40 divided by 0 0.015 plus the redemption value times the present value factor of one divided by 1.015 to the power of 40. And so notice that this present value factor is going to be the same as this right here. And so I'll just quickly rewrite that we will have one divided by 1.015 to the power of 40. All right, and so then if we calculate this part in our calculator, just 10 times this formula, we will have that $877.98 is equal to $299.16 and some more decimals, and that will be added to C, the redemption value, times this expression right here. And I'm going to plug this into my calculator and I'll get the value of 0 0.5512 and some more decimals. All right, and so now remember, we are trying to solve for C in this equation. We wanna know what that redemption value is. And so I'm going to subtract this amount from both sides of the equation. And so if I subtract 299.16 and those other decimals from the price right here, we will have that $578.82 is equal to C times 0 0.5512 and some more decimals. All right, but then our final step to solve for C is to divide both sides by this amount right here, and that will isolate C and tell us what it's equal to. But first, let's clean up our work a little bit. If we divide both sides by 0 0.5512, we will find that C is equal to $1,049.99 and some more decimals. Now, I think it's pretty safe to say at this point that we could round this number up since we have 49.99 to 1,050. And so I'm just going to rewrite this to be $1,050. And that is the redemption value of this bond. All right, so for our last example, we have that a bond with a par value of $2,000 paying 8.5% coupons semi-annually and redeemable at $2,050 is bought to yield a nominal interest rate of 10% convertible semi-annually. If the present value of the redemption amount is $410, what is the price of the bond? All right, and so the first thing that we wanna do here is write down our price equation for a bond and then we wanna ask ourselves, what do we know about the bond in this problem? Well, we know that the bond has a par value of $2,000, and so let's start with that. We know that the face value is equal to $2,000. Okay, and so then we can ask the question, is the face value going to be the same as the redemption value in this problem? Right, because unless it is stated otherwise, we can assume that the face value and the redemption value C are the same amount. However, in this problem, we are told that the bond is redeemable at $2,050, all right? And so since it tells us what the redemption value is, we cannot assume that C is equal to F. Instead, we are told that C is equal to $2,050, all right? And so if we go back to our problem and see what else we know, we are told that the bond is paying 8.5% coupons semi-annually. And so that is telling us that the coupon rate R will be equal to 8.5% or 0 0.085 divided by two, which is equal to 0 0.0425. All right, and so if we go back to our problem here, we are also told that the bond is bought to yield a nominal interest rate of 10% convertible semi-annually. And so the yield rate J will be equal to 0.1, right, that's 10% divided by two, which is equal to 0.05, all right? And so then there's one more thing that this problem tells us, and it says that if the present value of the redemption amount is $410, what is the price of the bond? And so what does this mean? What does it mean by saying if the present value of the redemption amount is $410? Initially, that might seem a little confusing, but if you look at our price formula right here, what is this part right here? Well, this is the redemption amount times the present value factor to the power of n. 
And what this calculation is doing is taking that redemption amount and bringing it to the present day, right? It is bringing it to time equals zero where the present value is calculated. And so this right here is the present value of the redemption amount. And we are told that the present value of the redemption amount is $410. And so this right here, C times the present value factor to the power of N is equal to $410. That is going to be very important because now at this point, we have everything we know about this bond written down and notice that we are missing something very important to calculating the price of the bond. We don't know the number of coupon periods. We weren't told the number of years for this bond or how many coupons are being paid. And so we are going to need to use this to help us calculate that, right? So if we take a side trip and look at this right here, we know that C is equal to 2050. And so we would have that 2050 times the present value factor to the power of N is equal to 410. And so what we wanna do with this equation here is solve for N, right? The present value factor is just equal to one divided by one plus that yield rate to the power of N. And so if we were to rewrite this to reflect that, we would have one divided by one plus J which is 0 0.05, so we'd have 0 0.05 to the power of n, and that would be equal to $410. And so we can figure out n, the number of coupon periods, by solving for n in this equation. And so let's start by multiplying both sides by 1.05 to the power of n. And so if we do that, we'll have 2050 is equal to 410 times 1.05 to the power of n. And then let's divide both sides by 410, and you would find that 2050 divided by 410 is just five, and that is equal to 1.05 to the power of n. All right, and so then in order to solve for n in this case, we are going to need to introduce a log function, which will allow us to move that exponent to be in front of the log function. And so I'll show you what I mean in just a second, but let's first clean up our work here. If we take the log of both sides, and I'm going to choose to use the natural log just because it's easier to use in a calculator, we'll have the natural log of five is equal to the natural log of 1.05 to the power of n. And one of the properties of logarithms is that you can take an exponent inside the logarithm and move it to the outside of the logarithm. And so this would actually be equal to n times the natural log of 1.05. Okay, and so then if we divided both sides by the natural log of 1.05, n would be equal to the natural log of five divided by the natural log of 1.05. And if you were to plug this into your calculator, you would find that n is equal to 32.98, which we can round up to be 33. And so what we found here is that n is equal to 33. Okay, and so now that we have figured that out, we can erase this work here, and we can use this value of n, the number of coupon periods, to calculate the price of our bond. We will have that the price is equal to the face value of $2,000 times the coupon rate, which is 0 0.0425, so we'll have 0 0.0425, times the present value of an annuity, A, where n is equal to 33, bracket J, which is 0 0.05, plus the present value of the redemption amount. Right? Remember, we were told that this was equal to 410, and so we don't need to go through and calculate that. We can just write 410. And so then, if we write out this formula, we will have that the price is equal to 2,000 times 0 0.0425. That's equal to 85, and that will be multiplied by this formula of one minus the present value factor to the power of 33 divided by 0 0.05 plus 410, but if we rewrite this present value factor to what it's equal to, we'll have one divided by 1.05 to the power of 33. And so if we plug all of this into our calculator, we will have that the price is equal to $1,770.22. That is the price of the bond in this problem. All right, and so with that, that's all I had for this example's video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments, but if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now, so I will see you next time.